Significant epidemiological shifts in human mortality have occurred in recent history. Decline of infectious diseases have given way to degenerative disorders. Cancer is now an increasing cause of mortality in modern society. Many modern ailments have basis in mutations of enzymes or proteins which are critical to normal biological function. Studying EGFRs allow us to better understand the mechanisms and mutations that lead to these diseases. Epidermal growth factor receptors, or EGFRs, are a class of high affinity cell surface receptors which are essential in regulating biological processes including cell differentiation, cell survival or death, and cellular metabolism. EGFRs consist of three principal domains, the extracellular ligand binding domain, the transmembrane domain, and the highly conserved intracellular tyrosine kinase catalytic domain. Epidermal growth factor receptors function as molecular machines which transmit external information across the cellular membrane. Messages are conveyed through a chain of events cascading from the extracellular to intracellular domains. First, a growth factor binds to the large glycosylated extracellular ligand binding domain. This activates the intracellular tyrosine kinase catalytic domain, which catalyzes the transfer of an ATP gamma phosphate to specific cytoplasmic proteins or to the receptor itself. Phosphorylation triggers a series of biochemical events that lead to cell division. Mutations or abnormal expression of EGFRs can convert them to oncogenes, leading to cellular overgrowth and neoplasia. Receptor-derived oncogenes possess structural modifications such as point mutations, deletions, and carboxy terminal truncations that appear to enhance and modulate the transduction signal. These structural alterations, both large and small, lead to activation in the absence of ligand binding. For example, if the entire extracellular ligand binding domain is deleted, constitutive activation of the receptor in the absence of ligand binding is thought to occur. Messages including cell division are sent despite the lack of growth factor ligand binding. Point mutation in the tyrosine kinase domain or of the extracellular domain and deletion of intracellular regulatory domains can also result in the constitutive activation. These mutations appear to induce and stabilize a conformational change equivalent to that triggered by ligand binding and dimerization. Another dramatic effect of a single point mutation is exemplified by the valine to glutamic acid substitution in the new transmembrane domain. This mutation results in the constitutive receptor oligomerization and activation of the protein tyrosine kinase function. Increased expression through gene amplification and abnormal expression in the wrong cell type are mechanisms through which growth factor receptors may be involved in neoplasia. Much of the current research on EGFRs has been towards a refinement of understanding of the molecular arrangement and various signaling pathways. To better understand the mechanisms by which EGFR mutations promote aggressive tumor growth, the Roos Lab at UCSF is looking at how EGFR signals can modulate tumor growth in mutant crass driven pancreatic ductal carcinomas. Their research has indicated that EGFR signals can be either inhibitory or stimulatory towards cell growth. EGFR signals play a role in tumor growth stimulation through the SOS1 RAS pathway. But the same signals can decrease tumor growth when sent through the RAS-GRP1 signaling pathway. Their analysis of colorectal cancer patient samples has shown that RAS-GRP1 expression is lower in human colon tumors compared to healthy tissue. Research at the Lemon Lab at University of Pennsylvania focuses on transmembrane signaling by growth factor tyrosine kinases, important targets for cancer therapy. One direction they have taken their studies regards the allosteric regulation of EGFRs and how the intracellular juxtamembrane region contributes to activation. They found that EGFR mutants found in lung cancer preferentially assume the dimerization acceptor role when co-expressed with wild-type EGFR because of the asymmetric interface. They postulate that rather than because of impairment as a donor, Superacceptor tendency of mutant EGFRs is due to lower cost of energy for conformational change. Their research strives to define the role of mutant and wild-type interactions in tumorogenesis and sensitivity to therapeutic EGFR inhibitors.
Most of the current research regarding EGFRs is focused on controlling the mechanism of activation. Future research involves taking advantage of monoclonal antibodies and tyrosine kinase inhibitors. The combination of these inhibitors interrupts the signaling cascade and halts the activation of EGFR. As more research is done on EGFR and its relation to cancer, these mutations within EGFR will become more well-defined and will allow for the development of advanced cancer therapies.